this engine is so under stress in this application. I feel like we're in some science fiction movie or something. It's like driving a, a big lazy boy recliner. You're just comfortable, smooth, but 888 pounds. Boy, that's, that's, that's like a Harley dress with every accessory. Welcome to the episode of Jay Lono's Garage. Uh, today, obviously, motorcycles and one of the most unusual motorcycles ever produced, especially from a major manufacturer. The 2004 Honda Rune, or Honda Valkyrie Rune, I guess, if you want to call it that. I got this brand new. It is so unusual. It is so different. It is so unlike Honda. But like Honda, it's beautifully manufactured and put together. You know, this is the kind of bike nobody ever thought Honda would produce. They produce sensible sort of motorcycles that do the job fast, efficient, whatever you want to call it. When they decided to make this, I'm not sure what they were thinking, but like Honda, being an engineering company, they do everything right. You know, I get to ride a lot of custom motorcycles. Sometimes, sometimes it's frightening. I mean, I was at Sturgis once and this guy was building this a variation of a Harley chopper and he said, hey, take it for a ride, see what you think. Okay, and I had my wife on the back and we were riding around Sturgis, not going real fast. And then we come in and there's a lot of bikes, so I slow down and the bike starts slow, slow. And then the front wheel locks up. And what had happened was, I don't know whether the fluid had boiled or what he had done, but whether he had an air pocket in the mass, but it just, it just locked up and the, and the wheel froze. If I had been going 30 or 40 miles an hour, we both would have gone down. I've had people come by here with modified bikes. You know, they take like a Triumph and they make it look retro and they change a bunch of things. And this guy let me borrow that. He went up the hill here and I opened the throttle and the rear tire broke loose. He said, whoa, this thing is fast. And I go, well, it's not that fast. And then what happened was an oil line sprung a leak. It just sprayed the back tire with oil. So I was, I, I thought I was breaking traction. I was just sliding all over the place. So I guess what I'm saying is, it's a lot of work to design and build a motorcycle, to test every part to make sure it does what it's supposed to do. And when you just build one, you don't have to do a lot of testing. When you build something like this, a one-off is fairly easy. Doing 1,500, 2,000, or 5,000 is really tough because the tolerances and every part, like on this bike, I don't think there's any parts with the exception of uh, the engine, a little, yeah, I guess the engine off of anything else. These master cylinders, all of this, uh, these brake cylinders here, um, these are all custom pieces. The headlight, this front fork, this, uh, this is the trailing bottom link fork here. That's not adjustable, it's just set. This is so complicated. There's so much engineering. I think, I think these forks are like $18,000 if you dump this bike. This bike was expensive in 2004. It was $27,000, which, for a Honda was crazy, and they lost about $75,000 on each one. Each one of these bikes literally cost them $100,000 a build. These were built in Maryville, Indiana, but they were built without thought to cost just to build the best possible outrageous custom they could. The engine, 1,832 cc's, four-stroke opposed boxer, six cylinders, single overhead cam. This is the five-speed transmission right down here. The engine also is liquid cooled. And it is a wonderful bike to ride. Just, I mean, the work that went into this radiator, you know, to make it this sort of odd shape so it, it integrates with the rest of the bike. Uh, the front brakes are two 330 millimeter full floating discs, and those are three piston calipers. And the rear brake is a single two piston caliper. 6.1 gallon gas tank. Uh, this fender, which was sort of the hot setup back in the day. The one sided swing arms, so you can see the chrome wheels. It really is a piece of art sculpture. You know, my dad had a 73 Buick Electra, you know, that 225. And that's what I think of when I ride this thing, because it's 888 pounds without the rider. So it's not a lightweight bike. Um, it's 118 horsepower, which is not a lot these days. Uh, but back in 2004, that was more than adequate and all kinds of bottom end torque. You've got a digital display here that's Again, brilliantly done, even the brightest sunlight, you can read it. Uh, and there's no plastic on this thing. This is all solid chrome. That's probably why it weighs 888 pounds. You know, I was watching the boys at uh, Beards and Bikes, it's uh, SRK Cycles. They know a lot about these, and I watched their, a couple of shows they did on it. You should check them out, they, they know their stuff. 
And I learned from them that I had got the very first one. <laughs> I didn't know that I had the very first one. So that was uh, kind of interesting. I remember Tom Cruise got one, Clooney got one, a bunch of the show business people got these. Just because it's so outrageous. And when I first got it, I kind of went, eh. But then it grows on you. When you, when you ride it, it is so, you know, I'm so used to cafe bikes, and I gotta do this and lean over. It is so comfortable and so smooth. Um, obviously, it's not a canyon carver, but it carries its weight down low. So when you're sitting on it, the weight is all, you know, low. And if you can touch the ground, it's easy enough to maneuver. Uh, this headlight looks like something out of Darth Vader. Uh, if you go to the SRK website, those guys have sort of the bikes that led up to this, uh, the show bikes it was based on until they finally did this final design. But, you know, motorcyclists tend to be pretty conservative. I mean, Harley's kind of like Porsche. They build a bike that always looks like a Harley. And when they build something that doesn't look like a Harley, ew, you know, they get in a lot of trouble. This is sort of out of, out of Honda's wheelhouse, so to speak. But the fact that they went, went into it with such gusto, the idea of just designing something that would be so outrageous. And the amazing part is, it works perfectly. I've had this bike almost 17 years. It's never been a problem. Everything works fine. It's smooth. It's quiet. It doesn't leak a drop of oil. You know, we, we forget how good Honda was back in the day. They make so many cars and stuff that you just sort of take it for granted. You know, they, they do a lot of breakthrough motorcycle stuff. The last time, well, the first new motorcycle I bought was my Honda CBX back in 79. That was the six cylinder like this, but a more traditional inline six cylinder incredibly fast, incredible sound. <clears throat> but then Suzuki's and Kawasaki's and other people came along with a bit more horsepower. So that was not a huge success. I don't think this bike made them any money, but it was certainly, I guess what you call a lost leader. You build it to get people into the showroom to see the other bikes that they have. But uh, just, just take a walk around it. Just so many places your eyes fall when you see it. And whenever I take this anywhere, it, it draws a crowd. People go, what, what, that's a Honda, what? Because it doesn't look like something Honda would produce. It looks like some Arlen Ness creation or something of that nature. But uh, we've got it up on a block there, so just make it sit more upright. But everything works perfectly, you know? There's nothing, you know, when you drive somebody's custom car and the wheel falls off, okay, you're still in the car. When, when you drive somebody's custom bike and there's a problem, uh, then you have a problem. I mean, it's a custom that works as well as a Honda Cub or a Scout or one of those early, but you know, everything works. It just, it's smooth, it's quiet, it makes just the right noise. Well, here, I'll let you listen to it. Let me shut on my yeah. There's your digital display right there. But you kind of have to see it on the road. It's a bike you really appreciate when you see it in traffic. And when you pull up next to other bikes, it's like Godzilla. It literally dwarfs the other one. It's 888 pounds. I mean, that's almost 900 pounds. But the fact that it's, that it's so low to the ground, it's only 27 inch seat height. So when you sit on it, See, it's easy enough. I mean, the trouble people have with bikes is they can't, you know, a lot of women sometimes their legs are too short and they're tiptoeing and the bike falls over. But if you're carrying your weight down low and you can get both feet flat on the ground, then you're fine. It's not a problem. But when you're on this thing and you see that headlight way out, the bike is eight feet long. When you see that headlight way out in front of you, it's, it's really kind of cool. I mean, you could do Oh God, a thousand miles in a day on this thing, it's so comfortable. It just sort of wafts along. I, like I said, it's like driving my dad's Buick. You just sort of go along and, oh, come on, we'll take a ride. I'll grab my helmet and I'll show you what it's like. It's so incredibly smooth. You can do hours on this thing and never, never feel tired or exhausted. From this riding vision, the headlight looks like a bullet. It looks like a nose cone just cutting through the air. I mean, it's, it's eight feet long, which is hilarious. I mean, this engine is so under stress in this application. I feel like we're in some science fiction movie or something. It's like driving a, a big Lazy Boy recliner. You're just comfortable, smooth. 
but 888 pounds, boy, that's, that's, that's like a Harley dresser with every accessory. I remember a highway patrol motor officer came into the rock store one day and he was driving a full dresser and had the radio and, you know, all the accessories on it, saddlebags and lights, sirens. And he dropped it and it fell over and everybody laughed at him until he reached down with one hand and picked it up again. And people went, oh, okay. <laughs> I'm not, not going to mess with that guy. I mean, you see a reflection on every part of this bike. The headlight, the display. I got one of those Suzuki, uh, what are they, RE5s, you know, the uh, rotary bike. And bikes are not any smoother than that. And this, this is just as smooth as that. Most of these went into collections, you know, not that many people rode them, I guess. I guess some did, obviously, but... And I'm not sure what category this bike fits in. I guess Cruiser, I guess? I mean, you really couldn't put bags on it to take a trip with it. It's just sort of a statement, I guess. It's a piece of rolling kinetic artwork. I guess that's a good way to put it. I mean, I got this because it was just so different, so odd. Like I was going to say, almost un-Honda-like. Then you realize when Honda does something, they do it to the full extent, like the first CBX or the oval piston bike, like this. Like the Goldwing when it came out, um, you know, people thought, oh, that's crazy. I remember when uh, the biggest bike Honda made was the 450. In fact, when Honda first came to this country, I remember they were looking for dealers, and they said they wanted to sell 5,000 bikes, and one dealer said, you're not going to sell 5,000 a year. They said, no, no, we want to sell 5,000 a month. And people thought, well, that's, that's just insane. Well, of course, proved them wrong. I'm not sure what the total run of this was. I think 12 to 1500 US, maybe 3, maybe 3000 total. I think that's about all they did. But such a big motor, my legs aren't burning up. Today's a warm day. And uh, there's not a lot of heat. I mean, a little bit, but not much. <coughs> if it was any less, I'd be concerned that something wasn't running properly. I feel like I'm sitting on that dragon in Game of Thrones, you know? But like I said, even if you're not a motorcycle person, you can appreciate this bike just from a styling exercise. And, and certainly for the way it's put together. I mean, it really is a unique motorcycle. It's just built to be a custom. And uh, it drives, handles, does everything it's supposed to do. The fact that they're able to make a production motorcycle out of something like this shows you the commitment that they make. Anyway, listen, I hope you enjoyed this ride on this unusual bike. Uh, you probably won't see too many of these around, so I hope you liked it. See you guys next week. Thanks.